You know, in Corinthians, it says that um, when a man is married, he doesn't devote himself as much to the things of the Lord as caring for his wife. And when a woman is married, she doesn't do, can't devote herself as entirely unto the Lord, but considers the things that will please her husband. And we can read that incorrectly and think, well, yeah, married people, they're second-class spiritual citizens. No, Paul is saying, and that is correct. That is absolutely correct. And if you're given the gift of celibacy, if you consider that a gift, and you can, you can stay single and pure, well, then, yeah, you are, not, you are not considering your first ministry is not unto the people of the Lord. But it's unto your, your first ministry is to your wife or to your husband. And that's absolutely right. That's absolutely correct. That's the way scripture teaches us. That's the way it should be. And here's Ahab saying, yeah, go ahead. Take my wife. Take my kids. Ecclesiastes says this, to everything there's a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time for war, a time for peace. There's a time to stand up and say, absolutely not. You don't get past this line and get to my wife and to my kids. Absolutely not. You don't get in here to this church and stand up here and start teaching wrong doctrine to the people God has given me the responsibility to try and teach right doctrine to. Absolutely not. There are lines that must be crossed, that must be made and protected against someone crossing. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. And Ahab had his priorities all out of whack. Yeah, sure, go take my wife and my kids and my silver and my gold as long as you don't touch me and I can still live here and be king. Hmm. Now what I would do is I would turn that around and ask us all, are we willing to give up those things that the world says we shouldn't in order to follow the Lord? Are we willing to give up those things that the world says we shouldn't give up? Our pride, our possessions, our position, the three Ps, pride, position, possession. Are you willing to just give those up unto the Lord? Are you willing? Are you willing beyond just saying in your mind, well, yeah, if I have to, I'm, I'm willing to go that far, but I haven't had to yet. But are you willing? Are you laying those things down? The second thing that Ahab shows us is that he was willing to listen to the Lord and follow him when it was to his advantage. Pick it up in verse 9. Therefore, he said to the messengers of Ben-Hadad, tell my lord, the king, all that you sent for to your servant the first time I will do. But this thing I cannot do. And the messengers departed and brought back word to him. Then Ben-Hadad sent to him and said, the gods do so to me and more also if enough dust is left of Samaria for a handful for each of the people who follow me. So the king of Israel answered and said, tell him, let not the one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. So you see, they're just going back and forth. This is just kind of a testosterone fight going on here. And he's going, hey, there's not going to be a left, enough of you guys left as the dust in the ground. And Ahab says, yeah, well, we'll see who takes off their armor at the end of the battle and has something to say. Suddenly, I love this, suddenly a prophet approached Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord, have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Here's Ahab, the worst guy of the worst, and God is still trying to show himself to Ahab. He is still trying to reveal himself. So Ahab said, well, by whom? And and he said, thus says the Lord, by the young leaders of the provinces. And then he said, well, who will set the battle in order? And he said, you. And then he mustered the young leaders of the provinces, and there were 232. And after them, he mustered all the people, all the children of Israel, 7,000. So they went out at noon. Meanwhile, Ben-Hadad and the 32 kings helping him were getting drunk at the command post. And the young leaders of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadad sent out a patrol. And they told him, hey, men are coming out of Samaria. So he said, if they've come out for peace, take them alive. If they've come out for war, eh, take them alive. 
We'll have some fun with them. Then these young leaders of the provinces went out of the city with the army which followed them, and each one killed his man so that the Syrians fled. And Israel pursued them, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on a horse with the cavalry. And then the king of Israel went out and attacked the horses and chariots and killed the Syrians with a great slaughter. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said to him, Go strengthen yourself, take note, and see what you should do. For in the spring of the year, the king of Syria will come up against you. So here's Ahab, and he's willing to listen to this prophet as long as he's telling him something he wants to hear. We're going to find next week that Ahab has a, has a problem with this. Later, when he and Jehoshaphat are in another battle against the Syrians, getting ready for battle, and Jehoshaphat, who was a real godly guy, says, you know what, we need to, we need to seek the Lord. We need to get some prophets in here and seek the Lord about how's this battle going to go? And so they bring in 400 prophets, but they're not prophets of the Lord, and they're all doing their thing and saying, oh, man, it's going to be great. You guys are going to kick butt. And Jehoshaphat says, isn't there still a prophet of the Lord here in Israel? And you know what Ahab says? Well, yeah, there's one, but I never like to talk to him because he never says anything nice to me. He didn't care about the truth. He cared about something that he liked to hear. It says in the last days that people will heap around them teachers that'll just tickle their ears, make you feel good, give you the good things in your ears, tell you that you're wonderful people, and God loves you so much. And those are absolutely true. But you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You will not enter into eternity and receive a crown of life unless you receive the free gift of salvation provided through the cross in Jesus Christ. doesn't matter how wonderful you are and how much God does love you. He loves you so much that He sent His Son to die for you. But it's like that Christmas gift left on the table. It may be yours, but if you don't open it, you never receive it. You never have it. You've got to receive it. Ahab was willing to listen to the Lord and follow when it was to his advantage. I find it interesting that he didn't seek out the prophet. The prophet went and suddenly appeared before him. There's something we have to learn of this too. Just because God was going to bring a great victory through Ahab doesn't mean he condoned Ahab's lifestyle. God's favor on someone is not necessarily God's approval of someone. I hear people all the time say, well, that guy, I know he's an adulterer. I know he's caught up in all these kind of things, but man, I can really see God has blessed him in this one area. That's just God's choice to do that. Psalm 73 says, Asaph looked upon all the wicked people and said, God, what's going on? They're fat. They're happy. They're wonderful. They never have any problems. Here I am trying to follow you and I'm, I've got nothing but troubles. And he said, I almost sinned. I almost became like a beast before God. Just a raving animal. Until I entered into the temple and I saw their end. And I saw my end and went, oh, wait a minute. This isn't all there is. These moments in time that we call our lifetime as human beings on this earth, that's just a moment. That's just, we're like a wildflower that just pops up and then the sun comes down and it wilts. We're just a vapor that's just, we're just here a moment and gone the next. But eternity, hmm, that's something different. And where and how we live in eternity is determined by our choices made here in this lifetime. That choice either to receive the free gift of life or to reject it. 